Excellent. Fantastic. Um, so as we come back to more the the nitty gritty of how you build a car, you mentioned that the 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 cycle to go from the drawing board and the 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 you know the decision making stage through to a car actually rolling off the production line is is about five years, right? Um, what is that? If you could in 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 brief terms, what is that whole process then? Where what different stages and and hoops um, does the car metaphorically have to jump through to to jump off the page of of the designer's um, drawing board and and into the you know the reality of having four wheels and an engine? Yeah, yeah. So to start off with, it's it's all about target setting. So before you've decided, you know the the um, details on the car you want to talk about the fundamentals you know where you're going to put the engine what's your engine range going to be what what are you targeting how big do you want the car to be um and you start at quite a high level defining all of these things and slowly through the engineering process you get more and more detailed in all of your design work um and these days it gets ever more complicated because there's more regulations that you've got to go through you know you look at the old, old defender for example the crash test that that had to pass let's be honest, we're not particularly thorough um, these days to get a car to, you know, a five-star Euro NCAP rating is really quite arduous. Um, and you've got to do it to be competitive. It comes back to that, you know, where do you want to sit against your competitors? Um, you know, and people like Volvo, for example, have made their name out of being, making safe cars. Um, and they really go down that route. And because they do, pretty much everyone else has to follow. Um, so you spend a lot of time defining that. There's then a lot of virtual work. Um, and these days with the technologies available, you know, your CF, CFD, uh, CAE, so computer-aided engineering, with the simulations you can run, you can get quite a long way through a development cycle without building any physical parts. Um, and that's something certainly you couldn't used to be able to do. Um, but these days, you, know, you, can get, you can get a substantial, you probably, before you built your first car, you would probably be two or three years into that five year process you know before you before you built any parts it will all have been virtual um and then you start building the prototype cars and that's where you start to see um the spy shots in your, your top gear and your auto car magazines and you know there's a car with weird bits of bodywork and camouflage patterns on it that's gone to the Nuremberg ring is a classic example you know we said everyone sends cars there they do industry pool days and the photographers sit on the side and just take photos of every car they see um, and send it to the mags so you build your cars and that prototype phase is all about validating what you've done virtually um, you know if you if you did a specific test uh in uh, computer aided engineering if you go and do it in the real world does it match that um, and over time you get better and better it's a bit of a virtuous circle you do some tests you might work out that you see you need a bit of a tweak so the next program along it gets a bit better um, and it's an area that i think across the industry is, is only going to grow um and it means that you start making these production vehicles later and later on so it costs you less money um, and it's quicker to make engineering changes because changing a part in a you know a CAD model is the work of i don't know maybe a day uh changing a physical part if you've got to take tooling to it you're talking months as a minimum generally um and then once you've gone through all of that you've done all your physical work you'll have signed the car off you then got to take it to mass production you know, you've got to change the factory and and introduce any new parts that you want into the factory or processes or operations and then you get the car out the end of it and you know there will again be iterative loops to build the quality of the product before you then launch it to the consumers um, but it's 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 quite rewarding to see the car grow and grow throughout that process um, and ultimately when the car gets revealed it's quite a proud moment for the whole team you know it's, it's five years is a significant part of most people's lives um, and then to be able to stand at the end and say, actually, you know, we played a really significant role in that is, is great. And you get people, you know, who are equally passionate about the parts that they've designed. So I personally haven't designed any parts on a car. Um, I've been involved in the decision making and the trade between, you know, do we want the car to go around corners better? Do we want it to be better off road? Uh, do we want it to be quieter? Do we want it to be lighter? There's those sort of trades that we'll get involved in. But, you know, you get some people who have been involved in, they can actually say, you know, you know that that bumper or um, those headlights. I actually design those, and they get to see it on every car. And for some people, that's that's more rewarding. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not a quick process. Um, 
although it is quicker than the uh, space industry, which I think is about like 30 years from, from drawing boards and seeing a plane in the air. So, uh, you know, it's all relative. 